Chapter 486, Mutual Guard The news that Sakurai seemed to have transferred schools for Kirihara soon spread out during the last morning lesson through the phone. Almost everybody knew someone from another class due to the annual rearrangement of class, which resulted in the fast circulation of this information. Thus, just 10 minutes into the lesson, Lu Xu had started receiving numerous entries of distress points from other boys, ranging from one point to more than a hundred. Lu Xu started pondering about his chances of igniting the sixth star should the news be spread to other high schools which Sakurai had influence in. However, it required 1,600,000 points to reach the sixth star. Suddenly Lu Xu began to look at Sakurai in a different light and his respect for her deepened. What a blessing in disguise. Speaking of which, she had not done anything harmful so far, except for her incessant employment of honey trapping. Then, not only had she helped to revive the dojo business, she had also indirectly made a huge contribution to Lu Xu's cultivation progress through distress points. The catch, though, was making him many enemies outside. But did Lu Xu care about that? Absolutely not. My blessing. No, I mean, Sakurai, why did you transfer here? Because I want to stay with you, Sensei, whenever possible, she replied. Sakurai had always been straightforward in her interaction with Lu Xu, but she highly doubted whether this moron could actually understand. At noon, Lu Xu's fifth star was lit up. Now he felt that Sakurai's face was much cuter than before. The bell rang and many students took out their bentos for lunch. Just when the seven boys were worried whether Lu Xu would ask them for food, Sakurai retrieved a box from under her table and said, Sensei, I prepared this bento for you. She opened the box herself, revealing fine-looking dishes inside. Lu Xu was surprised. You made it on your own? Yes, I did, Sakurai replied with a cheerful smile. Naguchi Yuki and the other six almost teared up on the spot. Sakurai was their true savior. Kirihara would have probably eaten their bentos again had Sakurai not prepared one specially for him. Just a day before, they were still hoping that Lu Xu would leave some leftovers for them so that they would not have starved. It would be miserable if they had to play sports after school on an empty stomach. But would Lu Xu do that? Nope. He literally finished seven bentos just to maximize his earnings of distress points from them. Honestly speaking, even Lu Xu himself did not expect his good appetite, probably thanks to his practitioner abilities. Meanwhile, the seven boys were on the brink of desperation staring at their empty lunch boxes. Did Lu Xu dare to eat Sakurai's bento? No. From the information given by the Heavenly Network, he learned that collection of God's practitioners, be it the conservatives or the jingoists, were trained in poison. Under her innocent look, who knew whether the conservatives suddenly decided to kill him after repeated embarrassment? Lu Xu grinned. If I eat yours, what do you eat? Puzzled, Sakurai looked under Lu Xu's table. But you did not bring any food, Sensei. Never mind. I have. Who's that? Err. Noguchi Yuki, be a good boy. Lu Xu waved at the seven boys. From Noguchi Yuki's distress, plus 666. From. What? You didn't even bother to bring your own bento? So you've decided to eat ours the moment you stepped out of your house. Complaints aside, they had no choice. In the next moment, seven bentos were opened in front of Lu Xu. What a variety of food. Struggling to understand what was going on, Sakurai looked at the seven lunchboxes in shock. From Sakurai Yeko's distress, plus 666. Lu Xu was a bit unhappy, because from the next day onwards he would no longer be able to earn steady distress points from the seven of them. Sakurai's party could easily sneak into the students' houses to poison their bentos, which eventually would be consumed by Lu Xu. What a pity. As he felt sorry for the loss, Lu Xu finished up the seven bentos, not leaving a single grain of rice. From Noguchi Yuki's distress, plus 666. From. 
Sakurai was confused. Could Kirihara's wariness be due to his discovery of her true identity? But she had always been with her teacher in secret and never made any appearance among the conservatives. She had been specially crafted for this mission, and she even believed that she was not the only person trained by her teacher to serve such roles. Therefore, her identity was kept absolutely secret. So, then, how did Kirihara Yusuk find out? Yet, she hoped that was not the case. Upon deeper analysis, there seemed to be many blind spots in Kirihara's sudden change of temperament and a series of happenings after that. But Sakurai could not find any hints of disguise even when studying him so up close. After finishing up the seven bentos, Lu Shu rubbed his face, as if to rub away his food coma. He could sense Sakurai's confusion and her cautious stares on his face. Then, Sakurai felt relieved. A mask could never withstand a rub like that, so he could not be anyone else but Kirihara Yusuk. Moreover, she knew full well that no mask could be so perfect, detailed and durable. And that was the precise reason the Heavenly Network had chosen Lu Xu for this task. Across the entire network, only Lu Xu could transfigure into Kirihara Yusuk so seamlessly. And the appearance of the mask relic had further strengthened Nye Ting's belief to appoint Lu Xu as the person in charge of foreign affairs. Chapter 487, Sakurai Yeko's Confusion Regarding Sakurai's school transfer, Chiba's feelings were the most complicated. However, her name did not appear in Lu Xu's distress record. Lu Xu still chose to leave the campus immediately after school. He had no intention to join any co-curricular activities because of a lack of interest and the necessity to keep Loki as of now. The noon incident had made him realize that his identity could cause suspicion even under the disguise of someone else's face. Thus, he could not be sure whether Sakurai would finally find any evidence against him in the long time spent together. Sakurai mentioned nothing about cultivation with Lu Xu, as though she was just a commoner. Perfect acting skills. As Lu Xu was walking out of the school premises, Sakurai followed him closely, which generated another huge wave of distress points for Lu Xu from other boys. However, instead of heading straight back to the dojo, Lu Xu made a sudden turn and walked Sakurai to the most crowded place in school. Then, they walked a big round around the campus before going back to the school gate again. Sensei. What are you doing? Sakurai was confused. I'm showing you around the school. Lu Xu replied naturally, over there is the main classroom block. That's the field and that's the male restroom. Lu Xu realized earning Japanese high school students' distress points was an effortless task. In fact, some students, who focused more on studies and paid little attention to external activities, were not familiar with Sakurai Yeko. After all, no high school girl was influential enough to be remembered by every boy in Nishinokyo. In the past, she had put in great effort to boost her popularity by visiting swordplay clubs in different schools but never had she expected her reputation to be exploited by Lu Xu in another way. At first, boys who did not know Sakurai well did not produce much distress. Yet, they were soon engulfed by jealousy seeing how close she was to Lu Xu, owing to her overly attractive appearance. And jealousy was a type of negative emotion too. Meanwhile, Sakurai felt relieved that Lu Xu did not seem to dislike her that much. If he did, why the trouble to initiate the school tour? After the end of the lessons on the second day, however, Lu Xu smiled and said to her, Let's go and have another tour around the school. From Sakurai Yeko's distress, plus 66. On the third day, the same thing repeated yet again. Let's have another school tour. From Sakurai Yeko's distress, plus 666. Even morons could tell that he was up to something. But Sakurai found it difficult to figure out a reason. Was it to show others that you had a pretty girl beside you? What's the point, then? For your ego? Maybe it was normal for a boy to have an ego, but it would suffice to have just one tour. As a result, Lu Xu would bring Sakurai around the campus every day after school. Gradually, the names Kirihara Yusuk and Sakurai Yeko became tied together in school. 
Whenever one was mentioned, the other would surely be brought up too. Gloomy, Chiba went home alone and she was no longer as cheerful as before. Indeed, all the recent happenings were a bit too cruel for her. Lu Xu knew it too. But the thing was, he was not the real Kirihara Yusuk, who had already bid farewell to this dark, cold cavern called World. Now, all that he could do was to distance himself from the girl as far as possible, so as to hide the truth that the boy she had protected for two years would no longer be back again. All their memories, no matter how deep and beautiful, could only be found in those yellowing photos. But Lu Xu had no other choice. It was not sympathy, though, because no one in this world had the right to sympathize with anyone else. That night, Lu Xu sat in the hall with a set of newspaper and a cup of tea, while Sakurai was practicing her sword play in front of him. His flying daggers were scraping against the snow mountain rapidly, trying to flatten it as soon as possible. In Sakurai's eyes, Kirihara seemed to have no interest in cultivation at all. However, legends went that the Kirihara's inherited trade focused on one's will, so she could not say for sure how his advanced training would be like after his completion of the basic one. Take for example the Hall of Swords, they spent ages in the painstaking process of foundation reinforcement. Yet, now, Li Xianyi's focus in cultivation was more about sharpening the intent of the sword instead of specific moves. Suddenly, Bundai walked in. She made a bow and asked, I'm going for grocery shopping. What do you want to eat for tomorrow's breakfast? Bundai found it inexplicable why Lu Xu decided to spend so much time with Sakurai Yeko these few days. But he had told her about his knowledge of Sakurai Yeko and assured her that he knew what he was doing. Bundai's job was to cooperate with Lu Xu. There was no need for her own opinions, and she knew it clearly. Lu Xu thought for a moment and replied. Anything. You may cook whatever you want. Okay. Then she made another bow and went out. Thus, Lu Xu was left in the room alone with Sakurai. Suddenly Sakurai stopped her training and slowly removed her black knee highs, revealing her smooth legs. Lu Xu swallowed his saliva at the sight. Sakurai was pleased, because at least it showed that the boy found her attractive. Then, she pulled her collar to the side, and her delicate collar bones were visible at once. At this moment Bundai was back again. Do you prefer river eel or moray eel? Moray eel. It's cheaper, replied Lu Shu. After Bundai had left, just as Sakurai was about to continue seducing Lu Shu, she was back, again. Are you sure you still don't want to bring your bento to school tomorrow? I'm bringing. Prepare one for me, Lu Xu said. Now he had to be more cautious about food from outside. When Sakurai was about to resume, she suddenly forgot which step she was at. What the heck? In less than five minutes. Well, I'm going shopping with you. You may practice on your own, Sakurai. Then Lu Xu left with Bandai, who had returned for the third time, leaving behind Sakurai who sat on the floor, dumbfounded. Chapter 488, Sakura Kimono Sakurai did not leave immediately, because she did not know where to go. Should she visit her teacher, who would continue urging her implicitly to devote herself to Kirihara? Or should she return to her apartment, where there was nobody else at home? Sakurai was an orphan. She had no family. Oda once said that her parents died in a car accident, but the record of which was nowhere to be found despite Sakurai's efforts. Never mind. It would not matter anymore. Her character was one of indifference, with no particular love, no special person, nor anything on her bucket list. Her action was dictated by whatever her teacher felt she should. That day, she did it with conflicting feelings. Unexpectedly, though, it was interrupted by Bundai. Good for her, as she had not made up her mind whether it was right. Oda seemed to have forgotten that people were able to think on their own. Now, Sakurai was lost. Where was she? Where should she go next? Suddenly she heard approaching footsteps outside the door, and Lu Xu appeared. Smiling, he said, Sakurai, why not go shopping with us? 
Enough training for today. Hugging her knees, Sakurai looked up in disbelief. Me? Yes. Let's go. Lu Shu grinned. Sure. Sakurai smiled too. She could not explain the trace of joy in her heart. At that instant, she understood her teacher might be right. It would not be bad to stay with this boy. Although it was meant to be a grocery trip, soon they found themselves in a restaurant with a bowl of buckwheat noodles in front of each of them. The utensils were delicate and colorful, but the portion was slightly insufficient. Lu Xu finished it fast. Sir, another bowl, please. The middle-aged owner gave him a delighted look, as though he had just gotten credit for his cooking skills. Sakurai and Bundai were eating in small bites, while Lu Xu did not care so much about table etiquette. He seemed to have a great appetite. Kiri Harikin, Sakurai asked suddenly, aren't you worried? Lu Xu was stunned. About? Sakurai lowered her head. Nothing. She knew it was not something she was meant to ask. By right, she had no idea about the connection between the Kiriharas and the collection of gods, but even she could not explain how those words jumped out of her lips. The next day, Lu Xu slept through the lessons as usual. As the end of term examinations were drawing close, he did not seem to be concerned at all. During the morning PE lessons, the class played soccer together. At the start of the game, Lu Xu burst the ball with one kick and walked away as if nothing had happened. Sakurai found it both hilarious and irritating how he bullied commoner students with his practitioner powers. Should practitioners not treat commoners with proper dignity? What are you doing, man? Chiba sat at the side of the field. Her friend asked her curiously, you've been unhappy since Sakurai Yeko's transfer. Do you still want to deny your feelings for Kira Harikin? She had expected a retort, but Chiba did not say a word. I heard that Kirihara's dojo is enrolling new students again. Saturday and Sunday classes. I'm planning to go and take a look this weekend. Are you in? It took Chiba a long while to reply, what? I asked, do you want to learn swordplay at Kiriharikin's place? Her friend emphasized again. Don't give up if you really like him. I'm in. During the last afternoon lesson, Sakurai was paying full attention in class. Aside from her cultivation experience and school transfer, her academic results were flawless. Actually it was yet another reason for people's admiration for her. Not only a talented swordswoman, Sakurai had won multiple academic awards in various Nishinokyo student competitions too. She was seen as a genius in all aspects. Just when she was engrossed in the lesson, Lu Xu passed a folded paper slip to her. Having made sure no one was watching, Sakurai carefully opened the paper. No one at home tonight. Sakurai was stunned. A feeling of relief or some other emotions started to well up in her heart. Her teacher had been impatient in taking down Kirihara Yusuk through her, but she had yet to succeed due to one reason or another. Thus, Oda was getting displeased too. But now, she suddenly realized that she did not reject the thought that much. Lu Xu left the class immediately after school. Instead of going straight to the dojo, Sakurai returned to her apartment. She stood in front of the mirror for a long, long time, until nightfall. Sakurai took her most beautiful kimono from her closet. On its fabric, the cherry blossoms took a strikingly natural look, as if light pink petals would fall from her sleeves with her movement. She slowly removed all her clothes and wrapped herself in the kimono only. Then, carefully she put on light makeup with some lipstick. Colors danced on her lips, making them all the more alluring. No one would believe she was only 17 years old. To her, it would be a night of significance, although it was her mission. She wanted to bid farewell to her past with a solemn ceremony. From that day onwards, she would allow some space for a man in her heart. Sakurai Yeko was a conservative name and so was she. The education she received outside the school was conducted by instructors carefully chosen by her teacher, 
and some of them were even of noble character and high prestige. Sakurai looked at herself in the mirror. Very satisfied. Thinking about the other person who would complete the farewell ceremony with her that night, she was equally pleased too. Then, she pulled on her white socks and slotted her feet in her clogs. Slowly she paced out of her room, and the door slammed shut. Nishinokyo at night was a riot of colors. Men in suits walked into izakayas with their friends. Finally it was the time for leisure after a day of work. It was a city of worldliness, with a certain degree of apathy and courtesy. Twenty minutes later, standing in front of the dojo, Sakurai knocked on the closed doors. No reply. One more time. Still no reply. Dressed in her splendid kimono, Sakurai took a long while to absorb what was going on. He really meant an one at home. Seriously? From Sakurai Yeko's distress, plus 999. Chapter 489, Identity Exposed The funeral custom in Japan was different from that in China, although they shared certain practices in common. For instance, today was the 35th day after Kirahara Yusuke's parents' death. On the 7th, 35th, 49th and 100th day, memorial services were held for the deceased. Lu Xu could not pay tribute during lesson time, but he had to at least pretend after school. No matter how much his temperament had changed, Kirihara Yusuke ought not to forget about his parents. On his way home with Bundai, Lu Xu was wary about his surroundings. He had a few targets in the vicinity, but no action should be taken on memorial days. Recently, he noticed a middle-class collection of God's member had made a conscious effort at reducing his social contacts. Just the night before, Lu Xu had failed to ambush another key member, who did not even appear at the place he used to frequent. As a matter of fact, much attention had been focused on Nojoa Hakushin's death in the collection of gods. Despite being an easy target, few could take his life so quickly when the attack had been anticipated by the victim. In addition, they were well aware of the vacancy in the Heavenly Network's ninth position of Heavenly Kings for their attempt at rolling in Li Xieni had never succeeded. Now, the sudden emergence of an Earth-type Class B metahuman probably signaled the recent appointment of the Ninth Heavenly King. The collection of gods speculated so. However, they had overlooked many inconsistencies, for example, Lu Xu was neither a Class B nor some Earth-type metahuman. But their caution was still stern. Moreover, there was one more thing they found hard to understand that the Heavenly Network person had taken Nojoa's weapon after the murder. In fact, his long sword was similar to the standard one distributed to every Class D member of the network. Maybe it would be seen as a powerful weapon for low-level practitioners, it should be useless for Class Bs. Could it be a Class B who despised wastage? Nonetheless, unlike collection of God's key members who were on alert, Lu Xu noticed that those in the lower tiers of the organization did not seem to be concerned. It was because they thought small fries like them would not pique a class B pro's interest. During Ye Ting's killing spree last time, he only directed his blade at key personnel. I need to know the internal changes in the collection of gods following Nojoa Hakushin's death, Lu Xu whispered to Bun Dai on the metro. Bun Dai gave a nod of acknowledgement. Okay. I will try to get them in two days. But I suggest a ceasefire for this period, for the collection of gods is as clever as they are crazy. Okay. I will be extra careful, Lu Xu said. He would never take other people's seriousness lightly. Lu Xu did not see Sakurai when he reached home that night. In fact, his message was meant to inform Sakurai of their late return that day and he hoped he would not make her wait for too long. In the meantime, Sakurai was on her way back to her apartment. Suddenly, a man blocked her way. He was in a black suit with a plain glass spectacles on his nose, framed with golden wires. The collection of God's badge in front of his chest made Sakurai alert at once, but she showed no expression on her face. The young man smiled gently and said, Hello. I am Kutamura Hirono. I reckon you may know me. Astonishment emerged on Sakurai's face. 
Based on your badge, I believe you are from the collection of gods. Could I guess if you are recruiting me due to my cultivation aptitudes? There was no change and Kitamura smiled. You appeared beside Kirihara Yusuke right after his parents' death, and your interest in him is apparent. A trained swordswoman, though I'm not sure where you got your skills from, yet you declared Kirihara Yusuke as your teacher. You would be insulting our intelligence if you deny your identity as a key persona concealed by the conservatives. Sakurai's blood went cold. Unarmed, she was defenseless in front of Kitamura Hirono, a famous, powerful Class C from the Collection of Gods. Unexpectedly, no one noticed anything suspicious about Lu Xu despite the inconsistency between his character and Kirihara's, all thanks to his flawless mask. However, Sakurai's identity was exposed before Lu Xu's, for the conservatives were too hasty. No worries, Miss Sakurai. I'm not going to hurt you. Instead, I've come for a negotiation. Kitamura leaned against an electricity pole, his face was calm. That old man, Oda Takuma, has extraordinary martial arts skills but pathetic brains. What a waste. He once proclaimed himself to be able to replace Kirihara Karaki with his schemes and intelligence, but we think he is much worse than Kirihara. Otherwise, why do we spare Oda a life when we insist that Kirihara Karaki must be exterminated? His words clearly showed Oda Takuma's value in the jingoist's eyes. If a Class C dared to challenge him openly like this, it truly seemed that the jingoists took Oda lightly. In their opinion, Oda was a man of conspiracies and schemes. He chose not to inform Kirihara Karaki of the jingoists' ambush plan while he could after obtaining the information from the intelligence agency of the conservatives. At the end of the day, Kirihara Kuraki's greatest mistake was to place his trust in the wrong person. But even Oda himself did not foresee the depressing situation the conservatives would land in. The conflict started off by targeting Kirihara Kuraki only, yet it soon swept across the entire organization. Without a leader, the conservatives were at a clear disadvantage. At first, Oda planned to remedy the situation on his own, but it soon turned out to be an overestimation of his abilities. One after another the hidden clans retreated back to their own lands in avoidance of the battle, because they had no confidence in Oda Takuma at all. Only then did Oda finally understand what Kirihara Karaki meant to the entirety of the conservatives. He was not competent enough even as a substitute. Precisely due to the same reason, Oda turned back in the hope of using Kirihara Yusuke as his puppet, and to obtain the authentic inherited trade of the Kiriharas. Sakurai smiled. My apologies. But I really don't understand what you are saying. It's fine. I'll give you three days to consider. Think about what's left in the conservatives and the current situation, and I believe you will understand in the end. Kitamura smiled calmly. I, however, am personally interested in you, Miss Sakurai. On a side note, I'm still single. Was Sakurai pretty? Very. So pretty that Kitamura could not find a second girl in the entire collection of gods comparable to her. Maybe there were a few commoners who were equally attractive, but at present the collection of gods actively advocated for the bloodline theory of practitioners, which prohibited the combination between practitioners and commoners, so as to ensure the pure blood of their next generation. Lu Xu had heard about it too, but his only comment was that the collection of gods had too small a population. They dreaded their offspring would have no cultivation aptitude should they marry commoners. On the other hand, the Heavenly Network had never had to worry about that. Marry whoever you want because we have a surplus of people. Chapter 490, Forgot My Keys Actually, as an ordinary large-scale organization, the collection of gods were reasonably powerful, with a total of over 10,000 members, diverse time-honored inherited traits, high average capabilities and strong cohesiveness. This made the collection of gods one of the strongest practitioner organizations in the world. Yet, they loved to pitch themselves against the heavenly network whose sheer number of members was already distressing enough. The collection of gods was notorious for their craziness precisely because of their unusual logic. 
The mainstream policy towards the heavenly network was to avoid head-on confrontations at all costs, while the collection of gods coveted their vast lands and huge population. Sakurai fixed Kitamura with a cold stare. She knew that she could never evade their attention even without her conservative's identity. However, despite her discontent with her teacher, Sakurai was a woman of principles. At the very least, she was not a traitor. I think you might have some misunderstandings, Sakurai said calmly. Kitamura asked curiously, I beg your pardon? I will not like you, because you are not good enough, Sakurai replied, smiling. Thinking back, the feeling of peace she had in her time with Kiriharikin was so precious, for at least it was way better than the disgust clogged up in her throat now. Then, is Kirihara Yusuke considered good enough? I'm capable of killing him, Kitamura said. His words gave Sakurai's heart a prick, but she remained quiet. Kitamura laughed. Are you serious? You are in love with him? I wonder what Oda Takuma may think if he knows it. Given the imprudence of your party, I doubt how the collection of gods would establish itself as the leading organization in the world under the leadership of the conservatives. But I know, under your leadership, the collection of gods will be doomed, Sakurai said softly. In fact, the main discord between the conservative and the jingoists was peace or war. The conservatives were not necessarily peace lovers, nor did they consist purely of calm minds. Rather, they believed that an accumulation of strength would promise better results than inflicting violence upon others. It was only a matter of different political stands, not a rivalry between justice and evil. Therefore, Nya Ting had never given Lu Xu any nonsensical orders such as to assist the conservatives. In overseas battles, casualties were inevitable among practitioners. There was no need for guilt. Kitamura's smile faded. Three days. This is my promise. As though she suddenly thought of something, Sakurai's lips suddenly curled into a smile. In the quiet alleyway, the girl in a Sakura kimono was as beautiful as a goddess, and her smile could cost the city. She said, Tomorrow night, no one will be at my house. Although Kitamura could not understand what she found so funny, the information was good news to him. However, he had to bring more people in case it was a trap. Thinking of that, Kitamura joked with a slight hint of a threat, since you said no one, there'd better be no one at all. Else, I may go on a killing spree. Please rest assured. There will be no one at home. With that, Sakurai left at once, as though totally unconcerned about Kitamura's attitude. Instead of going home, she headed to the dojo, because she had suddenly remembered one thing, she had forgotten her keys and wallet. When Lu Xu and Bun Dai were having a chat in the yard, they suddenly saw Sakurai in her gorgeous kimono. Lu Xu's jaws almost dropped in shock. Why was she wearing that? For a ceremony? Sakurai smiled. I forgot to bring my keys and my wallet. Could I stay here, sensei? Lu Xu pondered for a few seconds. You'll have to pay for the accommodation fees. Sure. Understood. Then, Bundai led Sakurai to the guest room. All of a sudden, this girl had become the Kirihara's guest without any prior signs, but it seemed to have happened very naturally. Bundai prepared some of her own clothes for Sakurai to change into. After all, it would be inconvenient to be in kimono all the time. Looking at Sakurai, Bundai smiled politely. These are my clothes. I think your bust size should be bigger than mine but please make do with them first. Then, Sakurai raised a question she had never expected, Sister Tanaguchi, do you think Kiriharikin would like a girl like me? Bundai froze. At that moment, Sakurai Yeko was no longer a spy. She looked like an ordinary teenage girl, lost in her feelings for another boy. Then, sitting down beside her, Bundai said, it's impossible for things like feelings to have a concrete answer. They are unrelated to personal interests, nor monetary benefits, nor any specific goals. Many idiots love others so as to prove that they themselves are worthy of love. They hold love tightly in their grip until it dies. 
But Sakurai, you need to understand that love is not something you obtain. It is not something tangible. Sakurai took a long while to absorb her words. Then, she thanked Bundai. After the door was closed, Sakurai started recounting the night. She realized that her first reaction was to come to Kirihara's dojo instead of her teacher's place, when she needed a shelter over her head. The decision itself meant something. Kitamura's threat was real. It was not that Sakurai could not defeat him, but what was truly dangerous was the collection of God's team behind him. Why did Kitamura Hirono, a mere class C, dare to despise a class B expert, Oda Takuma? It was because of his powerful backers, whom Oda alone was no rival for. For the first time in her life, the light struck Sakurai that the conservatives were not where she belonged. She knew full well that her teacher might not even stand up for her if she was targeted by the jingoists. It was about his attitude, not his power. Actually, the person who knew Oda Takuma the most was his student, Sakurai Yeko. She would never yield to Kitamura Hirono, for her teacher was, no matter how terrible a person he was, still her teacher. Now she realized that very soon she would have no place to stay in this vast land called Japan. The only option left for her was to leave. Yet, she was unwilling to leave like this. Sakurai felt that there was one more thing she must do. It was easy for people to overlook her combat skills due to the overpowering attraction of her appearance. But in fact, her cultivation abilities were the true thing she had always been proud of. At this moment, an urge started to grow inside the girl, who had never stepped out of her hometown since birth. She wanted to take a look at the outside world. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty and we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens To tell us things that we beg to know Like what did the song mean? There's no time